from the west coast of the country out but while the conditions are going to be quite the similar that the team saw right at that first test match it's going to be the second test match of that uh, series second and the final test match i must add uh, in hyderabad india taking on west indies and as i said earlier things may change moving from west to south like the cuisine might change the culture might change but what the west indies is really going to realize is the fact that the conditions aren't going to change it's going to be batting friendly it's going to be spin friendly and just because the fast bowlers don't feel left out i've got two fast bowlers joining me in uh, ajit agarkar and courtney walsh courtney i'll start with you uh, after that first test match a drubbing of sorts uh, uh, some sort of relief for the west indian camp to win the toss and get the best conditions to bat there Yes, obviously, I'll be very happy to have won the toss and uh, without hesitation, I'm going to bat first. Um, we know in India, if you get a good score first and up, then the wickets will wear it here as the game goes on. So the team that bat first has the best chance. If you score runs, you still have to score, put runs on the board. So I'm not surprised that they have won the toss and choose to bat. All right. Uh, just, just the fact that we saw just glimpses of that pitch, Ajit, and a bit of grass there, uh, would there be something for the Indian fast bowlers to exploit? You'd hope so, you know, at least at least for the first couple of hours. West yeah. Indies might not want that uh, now that they won the toss, but you'd hope there is something in it, you know. Just at least the first session, there's got to be a little bit of help. Uh, can't imagine a lot. I think we're still playing in India. Uh, even though there's grass, it's more to, more to hold the pitch together. It's getting warmer in most parts of the country. Uh, so I can't imagine some exaggerated movement, but hopefully there is some something in it. All right. Uh, one would imagine even if Virat Kohli won the toss, he probably would have decided to bat first. Now here's the Indian team that they've gone in, and uh, no surprise, it's there is a change in the team. Virat Kohli not known uh, to play the same team in two consecutive Test matches. In fact, he's done it just once in the 42 Test matches that he's captain, and this is the 43rd Test match with a change there. One change, Shardul Thakur coming in there for Mohammad Shami. Ajit, I'll get your thoughts on that. Uh, Shami out. I mean, there, there were thoughts that you could rest the spinner. What do you make of this? Uh, I can't imagine them uh, not, not going there. in with three spinners, uh, especially with, you know, I think Holder said the wicket looks a little bit dry as well. So, uh, no, I, it's maybe Shami needs a rest. I think he went off the field uh, in that first yeah. innings for India, maybe carrying a little bit of niggle. Uh, has had a long, long sort of summer in, in, uh, in England. Uh, that's the only reason. I'm not a huge fan of resting people mm. in Test cricket. I think you should deserve. Uh, owning that spot in Test mm. cricket, but it's probably uh, with a fast bowler you can always have that uh, sort of leeway uh, because you don't know what the, the guy is probably carrying a niggle, and he's he's an important guy in uh, in India's attack. So uh, another Mumbai guy gets gets an yeah. opportunity, huge opportunity for uh, Sharpul because he's been sort of with the team for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> it's you know sometimes when you don't get opportunities for too long, yeah. uh, it's it's a good time to play and. Uh, Go and bowl first morning, uh, couldn't be better. All right, uh, you know, someone who's really seen Shardur Thakur perform uh, in first class cricket as well is Ajit Agarka right next to me. Now, he has his record in first class cricket and on the basis of that, he's now made the cut into the test side and that's uh, there, 55 matches, 188 wickets at an average of 28 or 12 five-wicket holes for him and this is... Uh, just tell us a little bit about him. We've seen a bit of him in the limited over format and, and how does he go in the longer format? Yeah, I mean, look, obviously a wicket taker, at least for Mumbai when he's played in domestic cricket, you know what I mean? might at times go for a few runs but has that ability of getting wickets quick quickish through the air bowls bowls outswing usually uh, it's his stock ball uh, shortish guy so we'll skid on to you a little bit I, you know again I must be waiting for this opportunity because uh, hasn't had a lot of cricket over the last few months just been uh, traveling with the team but he has been a wicket taker for Mumbai. Uh, hopefully, he can replicate that. As I said, uh, not much was expected from the Indian team as far as changes go. Uh, probably it was a good time to rest him. But this is how now the West Indies team look. And it looks very different, even though there are just two changes there. But the most important bit is that captain uh, Jason Holder is coming into the team. And there you have it. And you've got a spinner in Jomel Varikan also making the cut. So, those are the two changes that uh, West Indies has gone with uh, in the second test match. And uh, Courtney, I'll get your thoughts on that particular. Uh, change and firstly on Holder, would you? I mean, many many were saying West Indies is just one change, but West Indies won half the side that they were in the first test match, and Holder coming in makes a whole lot of difference to them. Well, it does make a big difference. He's a captain and he's been bowling pretty well, and he can also bat. So, obviously, once he's fit, he's gonna come into play. Um, I, I was I'm a bit surprised Kimar Roach wasn't featured, but maybe he's still yeah. not recovered or they've looked at the wicket and decided to, to see where it will be. Uh, so, I mean, you, uh, you expect a, 
a change or two in, in, in the lineup. But it's good to see that they're keeping the, the nucleus of the team together. Um, I would have probably played the hex receiver depending on the wicket. Roach with his experience and going for, trying to go for the win. But they have up to keep all the batting in place and just play two seamers. So let's see how that works out. And I think, I mean, there's not a lot of changes that can be done. What you need to do is to get runs on the board and give yourself a chance. So they have done the positive in winning the toss and hopefully they'll get some runs. Okay, uh, Courtney mentions there probably Roach isn't 100% fit or, or anything like that. But we saw visuals of him, you know, in the net practice a day before. So fitness doesn't seem to be a concern. He's back in the, he's available for selection is what we make out. Then to leave him out, are you surprised too? Yeah, a little bit surprised because you want to win the test match to, uh, you know, e sort of equal the series or square the series. So you want your bowling to be strong as well, I think. But they've gone for a little bit more insurance with batting. You can understand that after after that uh, first test where, where they really struggled. Uh, hopefully this works for them, that extra spinner now because... Uh, because uh, they will be bowling last on this pitch if it if it goes uh, go that distance for, but for that to happen they'll have to bat well. I think they've just gone for more insurance with their batting uh, after the last Test match. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether that's the way to go if you want to win the test. Okay, batting to strengthen their batting could be the reason that Roach is left out. But Courtney, do you uh, what? I mean, I, I, we understand that you're playing in India. Conditions are going to help uh, spin bowlers, but then many believe. Genuine pace is genuine pace, no matter what the track. Kima Roach is one of those bowlers, gets you, you know, 140 plus uh, most of the time. Would you then go with him rather than play that extra spinner? Now I would have played the extra spinner um, for this test match as well because it's a game that you have to win. I would have probably played one batsman short. I would have leave one of the batters. Uh -huh. Not that they failed or anything like that, because it's a test match that you have to win. You want to give yourself the best chance of having enough all the depth in your bowling as well to get 20 wickets because that's the only way you can win a test match and I think with Roach, all the, all the lower all the batsmen, they can all hurt themselves so okay. the balance would have been probably or the easiest option would have been to leave out one of the batsmen and go in with six specialist batsmen along with all the others all around them and then have all your three seamers and your two spinners. All right, uh, we're playing a match in Hyderabad now this is something that you got to look at the record of the Indian team performing there and they've just uh, Played what four test matches at this uh, new stadium in Hyderabad, and India won three out of those. Uh, drawn one of the matches that they played. Batting average for any venue in India. Uh, this is uh, you could take a look at that. It's 36.56 since 2010. Uh, it's a minimum of 10 matches. And average for pace bowlers is 52.86. Well, that isn't really encouraging. Spinners, of course, as you expect, would do really well in Indian conditions at 31.18. We'll talk about uh, Jason Holder now. Uh, one thing is him coming back as a player, the other as a captain. Do you think that's going to make too much of a difference now to the team? Uh, because in the first Test match, many thought that West Indies were just going through the motion rather than really have some tactical changes. There. Yeah, but it's always harsh when you lose lose your leader. Yeah. I mean, you uh, you huge difference. You want your leader. I think most teams who usually do well have a few leaders on the field. I think that that's one of the things we saw with West Indies is inexperience in the last. Uh, Last game, playing in India is difficult as it is. When you're missing a leader, uh, makes it doubly hard. Not not just because he bowls and bats for them, uh, but also he's now an experienced leader. So, yeah, it'll be a huge plus for him to come back. Uh, they, they definitely missed him. A lot of times on the field, they, they were looking around uh, for a bit of help, uh, which is not easy in Indian conditions, especially against these this uh, Indian batting when, once they get going. So, uh, yeah, Jason Holder coming back is a huge plus for them. Okay, talking about Jason Holder and this is his record since 2017 and this is why he's so essential to the West Indies team. Uh, he's got a bowling average of 22 there, picked up 50 wickets in 14 matches and also 682 runs. Uh, in fact, he's one of those batsmen who really holds one end up and, and it's really at times where you need to show a fight is where he really comes to the fore and gets those crucial runs for West Indies, averaging 32 with the bat too. Uh, quoting you reading a few reports there, his ankle injury that he had uh, not fully healed is yet would you then uh, or do you foresee hold a play a role of the captain as a batsman rather than bowl himself too much in this particular test no i think he would have to bowl in this test match especially with the team only going in with two seamers he would have to play as part as a bowler so i think he's fit enough to play fit enough to bowl if that was the case i'm sure they'll probably play kibana roach as well just as a backup because it would be difficult to go into the test match with just one seamer in india um, I, I know it's, it's spin friendly, but I can't see him not being fit to bowl or to bowl his quota of overs. Um, and he's a big plus to have him with his batting as well. And as a captain, obviously, 
as I said, you need the report on control, not just leading the team as captain, but performing with the bat and ball. Do we sometimes not really give him the due credit as far as the batsman Jason Holder is concerned? We always look at him as a, as a bowling all-rounder and as a leader. Yeah, I think it's changed now the perception. You saw those numbers, yeah. uh, you know, averaging what 32 uh, enough runs, you know, 680 odd runs. So. Uh, in 14 tests, no, those, those are really good numbers. I mean, he's, he's their proper all-rounder. That's why it surprises me a little bit mm -hmm. that they didn't go for Kima Roach. I mean, okay, the numbers are skewed in favour of favour of the spinners, which will be the case throughout uh, any venue uh, in India. But once the pitch deteriorates, there is a little bit of up and down. When you have a quick bowler, uh, it is still difficult to play. And there, generally in India, the ball reverses. The SG ball, yeah. uh, if you look after it well, there is a little bit of reverse swing. So, uh, with Jason Holder back, I think uh, my opinion, a positive move would have been to maybe exclude a batsman and uh, include Kima Roach because that eventually could make a difference uh, whether the West Indies have a chance of winning the test match or not. Okay, interesting point you make about the reverse swing. Uh, Courtney, do you, we saw the Indian fast bowlers really get that reverse swing in Rajkot. Couldn't uh, really see the West Indian bowlers or the fast bowlers do that. Uh, do you think that's something that will take time or, or do you think the ball's not really working for them? No, I don't think they have probably worked on it as well as they probably could have in the last test match, and that probably might come down to experience or inexperience, yeah. so to speak. But Kim Arrow certainly knows how to do that. Um, yeah. He's got good control, he's got good pace, and he's been very accurate. So that's one of the reasons why I was more or less opted for him to be included as well, because I think with Channel, we know he's got the pace, he's bowled extremely well, and it's just been good to see someone like Kim are backing him up, or, you know, once once he's fully fit. And then with Jason, with the strike rate and stuff, they will be able to keep things under control better than in, in, in the last game. And then you would have the spinners to come into their own in Bishu, Warwick and, and Chase if required. So to me, that would have been a, a nice balance attack to try and put a lot of pressure on the Indian batsmen. Did, did you also notice that the Indian fast bowlers really getting that reversing? And, and it does it take time because also, as you're saying, probably couldn't get the work on the ball that much. Also, the ball is quite different. They're not pretty used to... Yeah, but there were, the there were two two seamers who are very, very inexperienced in that yeah. team. Then yeah. you need guys in the field to look after the ball That's as well. That's where Roach comes in. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you need... You, need uh, you know, the bowlers can't do, do all the work. You know, a lot of the times, they're more worried about bowling. There is someone who's designated in the field to look after the ball. Uh, and that inexperience sometimes uh, shows on the field. They got a little bit of reverse swing mm -hmm. in their first innings, but... Uh, not as much as they should have in those uh, those conditions. Okay, the other change for West Indies, Jomel Varikan coming in, the spinner for, uh, they're going in with an extra spinner in this particular test match. This is his uh, test record that we saw of Jomel Varikan. We'll, we'll get uh, uh, Courtney to talk about him. There you see four matches, he's picked up 11 wickets and an average of 46, uh, uh, with a strike rate of 66.50. That isn't really encouraging, but the best of four to 60. But he's pretty inexperienced in that front, just having played four test matches. Courtney, could you tell us a little bit about him? Well, he's, he's done very well in, in the domestic season home, man. I, I, you know, he's, he's a good good person to have around in the team and stuff. I know his figures are not jumping out at you, yeah. but you know, when, when he's when he's got it well together on his day, he can he could be a handful. And I think it, it gives a attack that variety that it needs um, with someone coming over the wicket or around the wicket. In India, does not have a lot of left-handers, but they still he still can try to get any purchase there is off the wicket. And it's normally, generally speaking, his control is it's good. Um, in the domestic season, so it's another chance or opportunity for him here now to prove himself in this test match. Okay, the other spinner, the experienced spinner in Bishu now, was he a disappointment for you in that first test match? And that played a major role in West Indies going down the way they did? Not, I mean, disappointment first day in Rajkot, it's, it's probably the worst day <laughs> to, to be a bowler <laughs> anywhere in the world. So, <laughs> and, uh, and a spinner, so... Huh. No, not this one. I mean, the Indian batsmen are going to play spin well. Uh, but much was expected out yeah. of uh, Bishu. Yeah, but it's the first couple of days of the test, you'd be very, very harsh on to criticise the spinner, yeah. right? Once the batters are set, guys like Pujara, uh, you know, Prithvi Shaw, I know how he attacks spin, uh, Virat Kohli himself. It is, it is not easy to, uh, you know, he, towards the latter part of that innings, he did, uh, yeah. he did start bowling well when there was a bit more in the, bit more uh, in the pitch. This time he gets an opportunity to bowl second or, yeah, or fourth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll probably, that's when the pressure will be a lot more on him to deliver. Uh, for that, West Indies will have to bat well first. Okay. Uh, Courtney, I'll stay with the subject of uh, Bishu. 
do you expect or do you personally expect to see a different Bishu this time? Because he may be bowling on day two or day three probably. Yes, I expect to see a more relaxed Bishu. I think in the last test match he hadn't played our bowl a lot leading up into this series in terms of match practice. Mm. He's been playing a lot of one day games in the test matches home against Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. The wickets were green, so he had the ball. So, he, I mean, he was not sharp as he can be. You could see that he was getting better as the game progressed. So, hopefully, with so much bowling under his belt in the last test match, he'll be a lot more relaxed and be a lot more comfortable and competitive in this test match. So, I expect to see a more consistency from him and um, hopefully a better performance as well. But it's not like he, he, he bowled badly in the last game, but you could tell that he was probably just a little bit rusty. All right, uh, now looking at the Indian team and the changes. Uh, not too many changes. Shardul Thakur, as you said, you would <coughs> rather have a fast bowler take a rest, especially Shami with the workload that's going to be ahead of him. Uh, now to the most talked about subject in that team, Mayank Agarwal not getting a chance in. And you made that point briefly that you do not believe anyone should just be given a chance in Test match cricket. It should, you should really honor. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a personal opinion. I mean, test, playing Test cricket is the highest honor you can have as a, as a player. So. You've got to deserve the spot. I mean, you don't want to rest guys just to give somebody else an opportunity. Uh, I know Mayank Agarwal's got what heaps of a million runs, I think, in the last yeah. last couple of seasons yeah. uh, in domestic cricket. Uh, Prithvi Shaw's taken his opportunity. He got one before Mayank Agarwal, so he'll have to wait for his opportunity. I'm not. I mean, KL Rahul's under a bit of pressure. Uh, he's he's got to score runs. I think he's got to score runs a bit more consistently. Got that big hundred in uh, in England in that last test, uh, but nothing before that in those. Four tests, uh, and he's failed. Uh, you know, probably yeah. the one test uh, he didn't want to get out uh, was in Rajkot. Uh, he's failed there, so he's he's under a bit of pressure. So I, you know, it's not at the moment he is still your number one opener. Uh, so I can't. I, I'm like I said, I'm not in favour of just resting guys for the sake of it. The other, uh, I mean, if I was to play the devil's advocate, the other point could be that if you're not going to try him now, then when does Mayank really get a chance? Because then you've got uh, tougher toes like Australia. So, but do you, do you, are we replicating the conditions that you'll get in Australia, irrespective of whether he plays in Hyderabad or not? Uh, not at all. So, uh, that's why I said, I mean, whether he plays here and gets 100, would that necessarily make him uh, ready for Australia? I, it, that is going to be a different series altogether. I think you'd rather, you'd rather have these two openers get runs here. Uh, and be confident as well, then you can think about the third one because Prithvi Shaw's or one test told is himself, uh, yeah. you know, uh, suddenly M Vijay has vanished, uh, Shikhar Dhawan's vanished. M Vijay, in my opinion, should should be around, yeah, hopefully okay. goes to Australia. But uh, you want KL Rahul to start getting runs as well. Okay, I'm just going to keep coming uh, <laughs> with questions to you just, just to see if uh, Mayank Agarwal, because we're getting a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, questions from fans as well. Uh, the other option could have been if you, if you rest did someone in the middle order, like a Pujara who's a certainty in the test match team, just to give uh, Mayank Agarwal a hit out in the middle. I don't think Pujara wants to rest in test cricket. <laughs> he, he plays just the one format anyway. I right. mean, uh, and okay, India's played a lot more test cricket this year, hmm. but sometimes you don't have, you don't play a game for what, two, three months hmm. uh, when there's a lot of one-day cricket. Hmm. So, no, I like I said, you know, it's, it's not fair on anyone to be rested from test cricket unless you're carrying an injury or okay. a niggle, uh, just to try somebody out. Okay, uh, we'll take take a look at KL Rahul's record as well because Ajit mentioned a short while ago that uh, probably the pressure is on KL Rahul. You still got Mohli Vijay in the mix. He's been getting a lot of runs that he got in uh, county cricket too. Then Prithvi Shah has almost cemented his place, and this is a record in the nine matches that he's played. He's got 380. Three runs with an average of roughly about 24. This best if you if you take that hundred out, average really drops. So which means there's a lot of inconsistency there. Of course, that hundred was a classy one that he got in England. Uh, Courtney, I'll come to you. I know, I know you must have just seen a little bit of KL Rahul and Prithvi Shaw. With that 100, uh, would it be fair to say that Prithvi Shaw is a step ahead of KL Rahul now? Uh, whatever little you saw, the two of them. Yeah, I mean, from what I saw on it, he, he looked, he looked a, a very good player for the future. So, obviously, I would say, yeah, um, he's got everything in the making to make him a top-class player. So, he's done the right thing and, you know, he's, he's, he's really done himself proud. So, very happy to see the way he played. He, he looked a good, very good player. Uh, uh, for, for KL then, uh, stop-start. I mean, we mentioned the numbers aren't great, but if you just look at his career in totality, not really been given a longish sort of a run and, and that could have hampered his uh, average that we just saw. I mean, in England, the conditions were tough in those three, three or four tests. I think most openers from both both uh, sides struggled. 
the ball swung around a lot uh, but that's when you want to see the difference if he is going to be your premier opener we we've seen uh, why virat uh, virat shown so much faith in him whether it's in one day cricket 2020 cricket or test cricket uh, and rightly so he seems to have all the all the potential to succeed but he's got to get start getting uh, i mean you're going to get good balls as an opener i mean you, you should be now with the experience that he has uh, good enough to keep it out and start scoring because if he if he is going to be your experience opener and struggle uh, and then you're talking about prithvi shaw and mayank agarwal at the moment who's prithvi shaw is going to be two tests old by the time they go to australia yeah. uh, and mayank agarwal with no test so uh, a kl rahul needs to step up uh, i think i think is for all the faith that the team management shown in him i don't think he's uh, done enough all right uh, just a couple of minutes away from that uh, first ball so final thoughts i'd come to you courtney first uh, uh, building up to this second test match and after the performance that we saw in the first test match could this be the west indies leads moment that that comeback that they got in england could could hyderabad be that for them well i'm sure they'll be open about that because that, that didn't happen too far away i'm there be pumped up and trying to give it everything. This test match is the last one of this series. They've got all to play for, nothing to lose. Um, they're already down 1-0 in the series, so you've got to be positive and upbeat. And, you know, they have a very good chance of living in the series here, but they have to get runs on the board, as I did say. Put the, try and put the Indian baton on some pressure and see how, how the wicket goes as the game deteriorates. But having won the toss, you can't take it for granted that okay they're going to win the test match you still have to put runs on the board mm -hmm. by batting and batting well so the challenge would be for them to have a very good first innings and try and you know put a bit of pressure on the indian batsmen ajit uh, they had a, i mean even though a single ball hasn't been bowled but positives already for west indies they've got the two personnel that they needed into the team and then they've won the toss as well can they build on from there now Yeah, like I mean, Courtney says it's uh, it's always a good toss to win in India if you can get runs in that first innings because no matter where you are playing, the wicket does start you know to slow down or turn or sometimes in Hyderabad there's a little bit of up and down uh, in uh, in that pitch. So uh, India also with a debutant to open the bowling. So that yeah. way West Indies if they can you know get through that new ball or the first what half an hour an hour, uh, you know it is it is a good wicket to bat on. So. But runs, runs on the board, and not uh, 200 or 250, a bit more than that. Uh, the same question I asked Courtney to you, Ajit. Uh, could this be the Leeds moment, or am am I just hoping against hope? Just being a true cricket fan who wants an exciting <laughs> Test match. Ahead. Yeah, I mean, from what we saw in the first Test, it's yeah. it's hard to see West Indies suddenly turn it around, but they've got their leader back, you know, yeah. and a bit more experience behind them on batting on these surfaces. Even though it was just two innings and uh, they struggled a little bit, uh, so. So they they'd only be hoping. At least they've done the first thing mm -hmm. right and won the toss, so they get the best conditions to bat. Uh, yeah. It's how they make use of it uh, is going to be important. All right, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us, Courtney Wall, Shaji Tagarkal. We will be back at lunchtime. Uh, West Indies won the toss, are batting first. Uh, looking forward to watching a debutant in Shardul Thakur bowl. That's all that we have for you on ESPN Cricket for Match Day. For the moment, we'll be back at lunch. See you then.